Chapter 65 Another perspective, slaves brought to the city too. Many of them were still small children. Would such children be able to walk to a remote village? We worried about that, but the children were able to ride in the wagons. Furthermore, we were worried about the long journey, but there were a number of adventurers hired who were obviously very capable-looking people. One by one, my own fears were allayed, but we all continued on our way with gloomy expressions on our faces. At any rate, our worst fears would never be assuaged. I soon heard that a total of 150 of us slaves had been bought. That's a lot of people. After all, there may be a rare gold mine or a mithril mine. It seems that large mines are kept secret by the state, and the public doesn't know much about them. So, I thought it would not be surprising if it was in the middle of nowhere. So, I can't even argue with the lamentations I hear coming from everywhere. Some were bards, some were smiths, some were merchants. Even the daughters of nobles and the daughters of enemy lords were all sent to the same place. Those who would normally be favored and even taken as mistresses are all sent to the frontier. It is understandable that they lament. The only ones who had the strength to fight were different. No matter where the frontier is, it is always necessary to have a fighting force. Therefore, he does not seem so pessimistic, imagining that he will be able to show his strength. The young man, a merchant named Rango, was generous and treated his slaves well. Perhaps because of this atmosphere, the slaves often fought with each other along the way. As a result, they arrived at their destination, a remote village, with everyone in a pessimistic mood, much to the young man's chagrin. But everyone was bewildered in more ways than one. Is that it? One of the children who had emerged from the carriage said, and a man nearby opened his mouth with an indescribable look on his face. No, that was different, I think. The man also tilted his head as he said this in a puzzled tone. The man was also tilting his head as he said this in a bewildered tone. It was a beautiful but strangely shaped town with buildings on the other side of the walls. Was Rango going to rest here and then head further to the frontier? I thought so, but Rango was happily conversing with someone and exchanging something with a child dressed in nice clothes to look at. When he gave the child what appeared to be a gift, the child jumped for joy and shot a large bow and arrow into the forest. The child's childish glee is smiling, but what he is doing is terrifying. If it were a noble child, he might have sold him hunting equipment. As I was thinking this, the child walked over and opened his mouth. Welcome, gentlemen. This is the frontier, the village of Seat and the town of Espa. I am Van Ney Fursio, the lord of the village, and I will be interviewing you and if you seem to be okay, I will hire you in our village. Now, I'm sure you must be tired from the long trip, so let's have a barbecue party in the village and stay overnight at the inn to relieve your fatigue. Then, we are almost there, so please come this way. With a bright voice and a soft atmosphere, the child said that. Feudal Lord? Van Ney Fursio, the rumored. The new baron, the dragon slayer? Nonsense. I hear such conversations in whispers. I too raised my eyebrows in disbelief and looked at the backs of the children, but the moment I thought we had passed through the walled city and were on the street again, I was struck by the view beyond. For the citadel-like town I had just seen appeared before me, a gigantic structure that made it look like a toy. In fact, the distance would still be a kilometer or two. But even from a distance, its presence could be clearly felt. It was a huge, powerful, beautiful, and oddly shaped fortress. At the back of the ramparts, which loomed out on both sides, was a magnificent gate, equivalent to the main gate of the royal capital. Behind the ramparts, we could see one on each side and a large tower in front. As we approached the gate, stunned, we noticed that there was a moat around the wall and a bridge across it. The child and Rango walked ahead with the villagers and passed through the open gate. We follow suit, and again shout in surprise. What's going on? Someone else shouted in bewilderment. 
After passing through the magnificent gate, we found ourselves in a large area with a few buildings on the other side. And at the far end, there was a wall, this time smaller in scale. Still, it looked larger than the town we had first passed through. When we arrived in the village and the child told us something, the villagers started to move in unison. Looking at them, I knew that the child was indeed the lord of the village. Everyone, we've arrived. Good work. Rango told me, and I sat there as if I had been distracted. It seemed that many of us were similar. Then, out of nowhere, an old man and a child brought chairs. Come on, use it. You'll be resting a bit, and dinner will be ready soon. Oh, no, we are slaves. I stood up in a rush and changed my attitude, but the old man by my side shook his head from side to side. Don't worry about it. We have only recently arrived in this village. When we were sitting in the same way, the people from the original village brought us chairs. He puts the chair down, and I sit on it, bowing my head. Then the old man laughed happily, told me a couple of stories, and went back again. Looking around, it seemed that everywhere was similar. The slaves were bewildered, and the villagers were happily conversing and preparing something. Even if I had to work in the mines, I felt I could do well if this was the village to which I would return. This is a friendly village. When the sun began to set, I was told that dinner was ready. Everyone was puzzled whether we were allowed to sit down even though we were slaves, but it seems that a welcoming party is one in which the star of the show is sitting down. I was grateful, but troubled. However, such feelings were blown away when the dinner started to be prepared. The good smell of roasting meat filled the air. The children would have run out of the house if they had not been restrained by the adult slaves. Amidst the crackling sounds, we were called out. Come here, come here. With these words, we were all made to line up in front of the meat. Juices overflowed from the thick meat and the fire danced. If they went this far and told us not to eat meat because we were slaves, not only children but also adults might shed tears. As I was thinking this, that child lord stood on the platform and opened his mouth. The villagers, who until then had been buzzing with activity, all quieted down at once. Well, everyone. Thank you for your hard work today. I would also like to thank Rango and his party, who have just finished their journey from the faraway royal capital, to here. Today, we hope that all the hardships, fatigue, and anxiety of the slaves will be wiped away, and that you will enjoy the delicious meat and fruits as well as the alcohol. Villagers, please also guide the slaves when they need to go to the restroom. Now, let's have a barbecue party. As soon as the proclamation was made, the villagers erupted in cheers. Then a skewer with grilled meat on it was presented to us. Here, eat it. It's delicious. The old man who brought me a chair said happily. Oh, thank you. I managed to say that much and put the meat in my mouth. The skin on the surface was crispy and burnt, and it tasted of salt and tangy spices. As I bite into it, I can feel the tender fibers of the meat chew through my mouth, and the strong flavor of the meat fills my mouth. The meat is freshly cooked and hot, but I can't stop. I can't stop. The meat is so delicious that it is unlike any other meat I have ever eaten. Delicious. A child's happy voice echoed from nearby. The villagers look at it with kind eyes and smile. My vision blurred. While biting into the meat, I wiped my tears with my free hand. Ugh, ugh. Coo. Mixed in with the sounds of the meat cooking and laughter, I could hear him holding back his tears. I ate the meat while crying, unable to hold back my tears any longer. I couldn't stop crying, remembering the days of slavery I had endured for so long.